Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the DX Commander multiband vertical antenna. Now this has been put together by a guy called Callum from m0mcx.co.uk. He also has a YouTube channel called DX Commander with a load of amazing content, all uh, oriented around ham radio and antennas. But this guy, he creates these uh, wonderful vertical antennas so that we don't have to. So anyway, he sent me this version. This is the DXpedition version. So I'm just going to take a quick look at what we've got in the package or what comes delivered. So the first thing is we have here uh, 100 meters of wire. So we have 250 meter reels here. Now this wire is to make the elements. So we can have like 40 meters, 20 meters, 10 meters, 17 meters, etc. Um, and then the rest of the wire will be used for making your radials. So as this antenna is a multiband quarter wave antenna and I'm gonna be ground mounting it, I'm gonna need to make some radials which I will lay along the ground. So let's take a look at the pole itself. Now, if you look at this, this is absolutely amazing. It comes in this really nice protected uh, case here. It's even uh, printed with DX Commander on it. So if you've got a few of these poles, you're not gonna uh, um, forget which one is which. Now look at the size of that. That is absolutely great. I mean, this extends up to 10 meters, I believe. So, um, and it's quite lightweight as well. So it's great for uh, like, uh, like it's designed a, a de-expedition uh, environment. And as you can see, there's many sections here inside which will extend. We'll also go through setting this up in the garden as well. Nice little end cap there to protect it. And that's the base with a screw cap on the end. So what we also get, uh, as well as the wire and the pole, is we also get this. Now this is actually a little box of gubbings, everything you're gonna need to build the DX Commander Expedition version. So let's take a quick look, let's see what we've got in here. Okay, some nice little fancy stickers. These are actually pretty cool actually. Um, okay, so this is gonna be the uh, base plate. This is the ground radial plate. So this will be sat on the ground and I believe that this actually affixes in here. So we unscrew this cap. It goes over this cap here, over the thread, and then we can screw, screw this back on and then it will sit kind of vertically like this in the ground. So I'm just take that off of there for the moment and I'll explain what, uh, what these other holes are for. So as mentioned before, so this is gonna be the ground radial plate. Um, it, these holes here, these are actually been tapped by Callum so that we can fit some bolts through uh, and then attach the ground radials you can I think probably get about five in each I'll show you that in a moment and this little nice little bend here uh, this is for a, a pre-made SO239 socket with a fly lead let's uh, let's go into the box and have a look to see what we we'll get okay so we have that some some clips I believe this is for um, for keeping the radiating elements um, kind of taut using some shock cord um, here's some paracord believe that this is uh, going to be used for for guying the actual antenna to keep it kind of uh, upright uh, some more of those clips can't remember the name of them actually uh, this is some uh, shock cord now this looks like the paracord but it's actually springy so this is going to be useful for when we're folding back the elements and uh, tying it off um, so that uh, as the antenna flexes and moves uh, in the wind, because obviously it's a, it's a um, fiberglass telescopic pole, so it's gonna have some movement. Instead of pulling on the connectors where the wire, the elements go into, it's gonna, um, the tension will be taken up by this, uh, by this shock cord. It will come into, uh, it'll all make sense once I start building it and going through it. Okay, so we have a couple of, uh, couple of hose clamps or Jubilee clips. And uh, we also have some uh, some tubing here to uh, go around these to protect the telescopic 
pole once they're fitted on. We've got some heat shrink. Uh, this would be used to go over the elements when you fold them back you can uh, make a little hook put this on heat that up and it will uh, make a nice little secure hook again we'll go through that once uh, once i start building it okay so this plate here this is going to be the driven element plate uh, and the way this works is so if i get the telescopic pole again just pop this on this is the base plate and then what we do we take this driven element plate put it over the top slide it down And as you can see here, so this is be where the ground radials will come out from, and this is the driven element plate. So, uh, yep, in the box here, we have this. So this will attach to here uh, as such, and then the fly lead will go off to one of these connections here. And then the uh, driven elements can go off of one of these other four locations. I'm quite impressed with this. These are uh, it's extremely well designed. The um, the plates fit just right. They're exactly the right size. So I think Callum has spent some uh, a real long time uh, developing this system, uh, this antenna, and uh, and uh, um, and he's done an extremely good job. So this is the SO239 connection I was talking about before. We can take off the, uh, the, the nut here and uh, that will slide through the, the base plate and then we've got the center of the coax which will go up to the driven element. I'll show you all that once we start constructing it. So now we've got some spreaders in here. Uh, so these are sort of plasticky um, I think it's nylon I think uh, quite thick nylon very sturdy and these will slide over the pole um, and stop at a certain section so this will probably be around the middle and I think this 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 smaller ones around the top because obviously it's got a smaller diameter uh, hole there and uh, what we do is we feed up from the uh, driven plate the elements go up through these holes uh, and then through to the top one as well and then back down and it can be clipped on um, so it keeps all the elements in a nice nice kind of configuration uh, now in the box what's left in the box is a whole load of um, connections so we've got these um, these fork connections which what we can do is we can pop in maybe five um, radials into these and uh, and then that can click to the radiate uh, radiating plate or the uh, ground plate we also have the wing nuts and we also have these bolts okay so what we should be able to do is take uh, take some of these nuts look at that perfectly going look at that absolutely brilliant So the idea will be is that you have have these mounted here we then put your radial wires into here put it over the top and then we can just go ahead we could use a washer and then we can just use a wing nut to attach them on okay so um that's great. I love the design of this plate. Actually, he's he's really thought about this and uh, made it look uh, made it look nice rather than just a, a lump of solid uh, solid metal. Right. Okay. So let's start the uh, let's start the building process. 
So the first thing we need to do is attach the bolts to the bottom base plate. I've just uh, put all five in here and then just tightened them up uh, just using my uh, my wrench there. Um, don't over tighten them, you don't need to do them mega tight. Now flip it over and uh, just pop on the washers. Uh, now once you've got all the washers on, you can then just go ahead and just put the wing nuts on, just to rotate them clockwise to uh, to tighten them up. Um, this gives a nice, nice uh, secure fit when you push the spade connectors in. Now just go ahead and attach the SO239 section into the uh, into the bracket there, as you can see in the picture and then move on to the driven element. Put the bolts through, you can then tighten them up as you did with the uh, ground elements, uh, put the washers on and also put the wing nuts on. Now this gets us prepared, ready to uh, take it outside. You may as well go ahead and make up a, a short uh, section of the shock cord and put the clips on as shown here, as you're going to, you're going to need them, which will keep the elements nice and nice and taut. Now go ahead and measure out your elements, uh, may as well do choose which elements you're going to do and then solder the blue connections on. While you've got your soldering iron out and the wire out, you may as well go ahead and make your make your ground radials. Now I've got um, four 3.5 meters going into each connector as you can see here. So trim them off, attach them together, uh, tin the end of it so that uh, it's, uh, it's going to be easier to solder once you've put it through. Now what I've done is I, I trimmed it, uh, I then pushed it into the connector, used the crimp tool to crimp it down and then I soldered it so that it's a nice connection and uh, it's not going to pull out easy. So at this point we're quite ready to go ahead and take all of the prepared bits and go outside. So let's do that. So here we are outside uh, in my garden. Uh, I've just cut the grass, uh, well cut the middle part obviously. There's uh, some edges which uh, still need trimming up. Maybe I'll uh, I'll uh, bribe my son to uh, to go out there with a the strimmer and tidy it up. Uh, but uh, I just needed to uh, make it nice and uh, flat as possible so that I could uh, get the Dietz Commander Expedition version uh, up in the air. Now this is this little time lapse of uh, me doing um, uh, the inspection and just making sure that all the parts are, uh, are fitted correctly. So I'm fitting the base plate uh, and then I'm fitting the driven element um, above that and that just slides over the top. Uh, now the driven element actually has a jubilee clip or a hose pipe around it uh, to keep it uh, to keep it in place because once it's under tension with the element it could potentially pull up so uh, by putting a hose clamp there uh, it uh, it kind of keeps it in place. Uh, now once you've done that you can extend it and um, put the spreaders in and then feed all of uh, feed all of your elements through. Um, and then obviously the last part of it is to uh, is to get the guy ropes and uh, and and guy off. Now I'm using three guy ropes uh, off off the first spreader. And once you've done that, once it's up in the air, uh, you can go ahead and attach all of your ground radials. Uh, there's five points on the ground plate. Um, so basically we've got five sets of four uh, and each of those wires is 3.5 meters long each or, or thereabouts. So the bands that I chose for, for this antenna was 40, 20 and 10. Now as I've got the 40 meter element that also gives us 15 meters as well. Now when you're going through the instructions that Callum's put together you'll notice that uh, for 10 meters you can either um, go with a, a shorter version, uh, a quarter way for 2.45 meters and a 5 centimeter fold back. Uh, for a quarter wave or if you want to go for a 5 8 you can actually make it 6.7 meters uh, with a 1.10 uh, meter fold back uh, which is actually what I done uh, for, for this for this uh, first build and once you've attached the elements uh, obviously they're going to be bunched up so you need to separate them out um, depending on the size of your garden I suppose would really kind of depend on uh, how far you uh, have each element apart. I kind of tried to do it evenly uh, between all of them. And this is kind of what it looks like uh, once it's uh, all laying down. Now once I uh, make this a permanent installation, which uh, which I ten intend to do, I'll probably score like some kind of line or something into the grass um, and uh, and push the push the radials down, uh, which will probably take some time because there's uh, there's quite a few of them to do. Uh, tuning wise, um, I did obviously do a test after building it, and uh, the only element that I needed to do was I needed to shorten the 20 meter element uh, slightly. Let's go ahead and have a quick work of a station, shall we? 
Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, you're also 59 plus. Uh, operating name here is Matt, uh, Mexico Alpha Tango QSL. Roger on that, uh, Matt. I wonder where about you are. We're located uh, just on the outskirts of City of Durham. Uh, yeah, I'm located in a little small village called Great Missenden. Uh, that's in Buckinghamshire. Uh, um, Indy Oscar 91 Papa Quebec is the uh is the locator and uh yeah you're an absolutely lovely signal down here uh, this afternoon uh there is a little bit of qsb though it does fade out but uh yeah nice and strong uh, uh 10 over 9 and uh, uh at the peak go ahead yeah right you're on that matter yeah there's a flutter on your signal but they're uh, very 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 strong and solid yeah uh, sometimes the law is not an f7 but uh 20 db or most of the time they don't problem at all yeah, 73s, I uh, hope you get a, a, lot, a lot of contacts. Okay, have a great afternoon. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey Clear. Ta-da. Now, what you may have noticed there when I was talking, uh, obviously I'm on uh, 7.185, which is 40 meters. The SWR was absolutely uh, amazing. I wasn't using internal tuner, it was about 1.1, and it's pretty much the same uh, across the rest of the bands as well that it supports. Uh, uh, 20 meters and 10 meters uh, was uh, also really good on uh, on SWR. Now, on the screen at the moment, this is uh, M0 MCX's website. This is Callum's website, uh, otherwise known as DX Commander. Uh, you can go ahead Head and browse m0mcx.co.uk and have a look at his store and all the different types of uh, uh, DX commanders that he sells. It's not just one, he has a, a whole range of, uh, of multi band verticals. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel as well, just type in DX commander. And uh, if you if you like uh, anything to do with ham radio or uh, if you love uh, antenna theory, go and, go and give him a like, go and give him a subscription uh, because he's, uh, he's a really cool, funny dude. And uh, any nosy stuff anyway until the next video guys you take care and uh, yeah well we'll see you in the next one